I like it. Very nice choice <laughs> of, uh, of uh, chords there. Yeah. I love it. Quentin, welcome. Paul here. We're at Music Villa. We're in Bozeman, Montana, home of Gibson Guitars. Um, and today we have a very special one, uh, very limited edition. This is the Jerry Cantrell model. So Jerry Cantrell, very well known for his guitar playing in Alice in Chains. Uh, very popular band from the grunge days of Seattle. And uh, who would have thought he would have an acoustic signature model? Yeah, but you know, I, I, you know, I don't associate Alice in Chains with acoustic music per se. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you go back and listen, and there's a lot of acoustic influence. They had that really good. I guess it was an MTV Unplugged. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Which was which was really enjoyable. You know, and I grew up with that music. Yeah. So it's me too. Even if it isn't on my current playlist, uh, it still echoes in the back. Of, totally. That of, was a big time. I don't know yeah. if you're. For people who weren't from the Northwest, uh, may not have felt it as much, but the grunge movement of Seattle was, well, I it mean, was it big was in very, my life. It, it was, was very big, impactful. Yeah. Um, you know, on the East Coast in the late, you know, mid to late 80s, early 90s, you know, and beyond, um, that's that was all we listened to. We were, oh, good. So you it know, was it was big a, out on the East it was Coast. Nirvana, as well. you know, yeah. it was the kind of spearheading, then Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, yeah. and then there were all the little merged Chris Cornell and yeah. Soundgarden, and then they'd start to get together in these little interesting groups like Temple of the Dog. You Love that? that's one. That's my favorite. Yeah. By the um, way, but anyway, yeah. So very pivotal, and um, the the musicians that were the uh, foundation for that genre of music. Yeah. Um, yeah. They. They did some really interesting well, things. Well, even if you're in a metal band or a rock band or grunge band, whatever, mm -hmm. every guitar player wants an acoustic anyway. You're yeah. always going to play an acoustic. You're going to write point, You're yeah. going to write songs on it and stuff. So mm -hmm. let's check this puppy out. So yeah. uh, read the label for me. That's what I was reading yeah. before. It is the Jerry Cantrell Fire Devil. Fire Devil. Okay. So we're <laughs> going to call this puppy the Fire Devil. That's what's the pick guard right there. Um, and I don't know really, you know, what that means, but it sounds cool. It's a very cool looking pickguard. Yeah, I'm trying to decide. So this somebody correct us out Is there. Somebody like will know. Fire, that's what I'm wondering. Are they yeah. fireflies, or is that a name for like the the assassin killer wasps or something? Yeah, Maybe fire and fly. I don't know. Maybe that's the name of one of his albums. Fire, I don't know. fire yeah. devil. No. Cool guitar though. I gotta admit. Help us fill uh, in the gaps with a comment, please. Yeah. Uh, I have to admit though. When you were playing it earlier, this thing sounds amazing. Yeah. So let me tell you what it is, and then we'll kind of look at some of the features on it. Um, it's a songwriter mm -hmm. body shape, um, but it's a little bit thinner. Um, so, you know, it's a and it's rosewood back and sides, spruce top, black of course, cool pickguard, twelve. That's twelfth fret. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Cantrell on the truss cover, and then on the back's kind of his signature JJ. Um, I believe that's like a family brand, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know exactly, but that fits it's in. on one of his amps too, the the Friedman amp that he has, a signature amp, and it says JJ on there too. So again, another opportunity to help us fill in the gaps. Yeah, tell us what JJ is. And in this neck is that wall? mahogany. Mahogany. Yep. That's mahogany. Yep. See, this is I, this is what an idiot I am. Um, if it's not brown. In the traditional brown mahogany that I yeah. think of, then I'm like, what? What is that? This is, you know, you can when you stay, you can stain it and do different things to make it look darker. But yeah. well, that is mahogany. That's so the, that's the lightest mahogany I think I've ever seen. But yeah. it's attractive, and I like the way it complements some of the other features. You know. Yeah. But I think, as you mentioned, plus you know, you got the for those shredders, I can get up here with a nice cutaway. But yep. it it sounds good. Um, yeah. Strum it. I got to be very careful because I don't want to. You do well. It's black for it's, one. Yeah, so it, black. It shows. Shows scratches. So I'm trying to stay way above the surface in the pickguard, yeah. but, but it's got it's got yeah. a really nice sound. That should have been an Alice and Chain yeah. song. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. It's, listen to that though. It's, Mr. It's Cantrell, nice. please feel free to take that and do something with it. <laughs> it's got a pickup in it too, by the way. Yep. Uh, the uh, Heller bags. Sorry, you're gonna say the pickup. That's okay. I just wanted to hear that's some right. single note no, stuff. That's good. I like it. Heller bags. Heller bags. Uh, VTC, I think, in there. And then uh, what else? What are we missing here? I don't know. Cool guitar. I like it. Oh, 
Hun I think there's a hundred made. A hundred. One hundred. Okay. World, so worldwide. <coughs> so, so very limited. Yep. That's it. Oh, very nice. Well, Fire Devil. I would like to play this. The Jerry Fire Cantrell. Devil. Um, cool guitar. Yeah. I like Fire it. Made Devil. right here in Bozeman, Montana. Come check it out. When you uh, say Fire Devil, I want to whisper it. You do? Yeah. Do Fire. it. Fire Devil. I like that. It's You know, it just sounds yeah. more mysterious. It does. But it plays great, you gotta too. Get right in the, you got to get right up to the mic and do that. Yeah. yeah. Really? No, yeah. Nah, I'm not going to do that. That's okay. already... We're already getting weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it just, it plays very well, you know, and it, it sounds nice. The uh, Or whisper it into the sound the, um, What about the nut width? Because uh, it feels a little... is, I believe, 1.725. Right. So not, if my math's right, it's slightly less than one and three quarter. I believe that is correct. But more than, what? One and 11 sixteenths. Right. Yep. Interesting. That's what you yep. get in a custom, ladies and gentlemen. Is very cool. Pretty standard for Gibson, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. They do mm -hmm. 0.72 all the time? Yes, 0.72. Interesting. Seven, yeah. I did not 1. know 1.725. See, you learn something. I learn something every time I well, talk to Paul. Well, I'm horrible with numbers, so I always, <laughs> I always get them I'm always get them mixed up. But it's Gibson's always right in between those two. Mm -hmm. um, no, this, I think, um, this, this is a great guitar for anybody that yeah. loves Gibson and acoustic uh, playability of songwriter shape and design. Yeah. Uh, but particularly special, meaningful for those folks who... Like yeah. ourselves, may have had a. If you're a, a collector, unique, yeah. a collector, and you had a great experience yeah, with the. Uh, yeah, with the grunge, particularly yeah. Alice in Chains and yep. Mr. Cantrell's music. I yeah. think this is a, a wonderful uh, confluence of opportunity. Yeah, I agree. I like it. Yeah. I'm all for it. <laughs> right all right, Quentin. Thanks. You bet. We'll uh, see you all soon.